In this session we're going to talk about pocket milling and we're just going to continue in the same file using the same block that we've been using. So we're going to right click and click on top. I want to make sure we're set to 2D and that my Z depth is set to zero. Now I want to mill a pocket right in the middle of this block so we need to create a construction line so I'm going to select a line I'm going to let it snap to the center or midpoint of the top line and then the midpoint of that bottom line. Notice how it snaps to it and we're good. Click OK. Now we're going to create a rectangular shape. Rectangular. We're going to let it snap to the center. We're going to make it two and a half inches long and one and a quarter inches wide. And we're going to put a 0.3 corner radius on each corner. And now we're going to just let it snap to the center point. We're just going to hover over it until it snaps and click OK. Done. Every time you create something, make sure you hit save. All right, so now you can see that that outline of that pocket is on top of that block. So I don't need this construction line anymore. I do want to create a representation of the depth. So we're going to transform, translate. We're going to hold the shift button down and select one of these legs. And when you hold shift and select, it selects a chain. So we click in selection. I'm going to roll the model just a little bit. And then we're going to join and we're going to translate it minus 0.5 enter so now at each intersection or tangency point it has a connecting line with the top and the bottom outline of that pocket and then all we do is click OK so now we are ready to create a pocket routine so we're gonna right click next to the red arrow mill toolpaths and then select pocket. Then the, the prompt says select pocket chain one. We're going to select chain and because chain is active all we have to do is select one of the legs and it should go all the way around. Now the reason it didn't select all the way around is because we are set to 3D. So when it comes to an intersection it wants to know do you want me to go straight or do you want me to go down. So if we click on C plane and we select the next entity notice how it did not stop at each intersection wondering which way to go it just continued on around until it created a complete loop so click OK we're going to use the tool number one and we're going to update the spindle speed going to rapid retract feed rate of 20 inches a minute and a plunge rate of 20 inches a minute and we'll type pocket in the comment section then we get to the cut parameters and we're going to leave 20 thousandths on the wall and 15 thousandths on the floor that's all you need to do there I'm going to create a roughing operation and you have several different options to pick from as to how the material is going to get removed. Now I personally like parallel spiral and also high speed. Now parallel spiral works from the center out and all you have to do is tell it the amount of step over distance and that you want to spiral inside to outside. Now these check marks are there by default so usually all you have to do is select the pattern you like and the step over distance. Then we're going to select the entry motion. We have three options. We can either do off, ramp where we zigzag back and forth or do a helix. I prefer ramp because it starts in the middle and there's less chance of the tool burying itself. So minimum length is quarter inch and then the maximum length I'm just going to add two inches. 
The Z clearance, so it starts zigzagging 100 thousands above the part. I'm going to reduce that to 50 thousands to reduce the airtime. The XY clearance is just making sure that the tool does not get within 100 thousands of any wall. And then the plunge angle, depending on what material you're cutting. So we're going to cut aluminum and three degrees will be just fine for that. So checking nothing else, we'll go to finishing. And for now, I'm going to turn finishing off because in our cut parameters, we left material. So there's no need to finish and leave excess material. We're going to create a separate finish file. Then the linking parameters. We'll make sure that everything is set to absolute. One inch on the retract, 0.1 on the feed plane, zero is top of stock. Depth, we can either manually enter it or click on depth and then let it snap to the bottom of the pocket and then automatically brings in the actual depth of the drawing. So as long as you know that the drawing is good or the model is good, that depth is accurate. Then all you have to do is turn on the coolant and let's see what we get. So again, hit save before you back plot, then click back plot and let's slow that down. So you can see it starts in the center of the pocket. zigzags down or ramps down all the way to a half inch depth at a three degree angle between those two points. And then once it's at full depth, leaving 15 thousandths on the floor, it will start working itself outward. So let's speed that up a little bit. And then you can see the depth in the lower left hand corner of your screen. You can see we're taking a hundred thousands per pass, getting closer and closer to the outline of your pocket. And you can see if I turn the shade on, you can see we're leaving 20 thousands on the wall. And if I go to front, you can see our blue line is 15 thousands up from the floor. So we'll go back to top, click OK, and we have just roughed our pocket.